And what we'd like to do now, and I, Frank, what I thought I'd do is just pitch it directly to Matthew Hughes. Do you need to introduce Matthew? When I showed up as chancellor of the post-secondary system, you'd have thought that all I had to do was snap my finger and somebody come running and tell me about workforce development. There was nobody in the Department of Post-Secondary Education in charge of workforce development. Nobody. I didn't have a second, third, or fourth choice. I had one choice to make the workforce development director, and that was Dr. Nancy Hughes, who had been our technical education director of the department, and I was on board. I not only was so convinced of that, I was able to convince the governor, the governor to make him the governor's director of his office of workforce development. So we now have all those functions in one person. And no one person in the state of Alabama has had a greater impact on improving our workforce training than Dr. Nancy Hughes. So I'm going to ask him to come up here and give you some more specific insights from Washington. Thank you, Chancellor Byrne. You know, uh, Neil evoked the name of Greg Vince Lombardi, and in keeping with that football thing, I'll tell you, following Neil Wade and Bradley Byrne as a speaker, it's like following Bear Bryant as football coach, so I guess I am the Ray Perkins of your speakers. <laughs> um, so I, I hope that I don't disappoint you, and I hope that I certainly don't uh, pan out like Ray Perkins did. Um, we could go several directions with this workforce development discussion today, but in, in thinking about what you are doing in Marshall County, getting the strategic planning process, I think the most important message that I can deliver to you today is this. The Office of Workforce Development, along with the, the two-year college system, is here to serve you. We are a service to you and to the leadership here in this community. We do so by trying to provide to you the resources, and the technical assistance that you need to carry out your priorities, to carry out what's important to you and the quality of life that you want to have in Marshall County. So we are a service to you. Having said that, I want to couch this around the, the situation in the state of Alabama, workforce development-wise, to kind of give you the, the bigger picture of where we come from, the uh, Office of Workforce Development, and then let's focus specifically on Marshall County. Now, the Alabama economy, as, as Neil, the Chancellor, has talked about, has, has just uh, experienced uh, major uh, economic growth in the, in the past few years. I tell you, I, I grew up in Geneva, and if, I don't know if any of you know where Geneva is, I know Alabama Champion. Back there. But uh, Geneva is in the southeast corner of Alabama and it was dominated by the textile industry. When I was growing up, that, that's, where, that's where my friends' parents and grandparents were. That's where people went to work. They went to work in the mill. Those days were long gone. In a three year period of time, 1,300 people, boom, out of work right then. So as someone growing up in, in a community like that, it is just astounding to me what we are experiencing in Alabama. And, and it's because of the leadership that we have, the leadership that you have in your local delegation here, the leadership that we have at the state level has created this environment in Alabama. Um, we, we've mentioned BRAC, the impact of BRAC that's going to have on this whole in the entire Tennessee Valley area, the biotechnology industry. The Chancellor, though, mentioned that with this growth that we've experienced and with this influx of high skill, high wage employment, the gap, the skills gap, has widened in Alabama. We are also experiencing a significant need to backfill jobs that have been vacated by people who are taking these higher paying jobs. 
um, a point was made recently in a report that, that was kind of negative about Alabama. It said, well, the great majority of our jobs that are available are in lower paying uh, food service or, or maybe retail type jobs. Well, you know what? That is a good thing because people that vacated those jobs took higher paying jobs and now we've got to have people taking the jobs that have been vacated. A major, a major role of, of our office is to, is to help employers fill those jobs that have been vacated. That's our service to the existing industries that the Chancellor mentioned. Now, at the state level, our, our workforce development system has been characterized by a disjointed process. In fact, it wasn't even a system. I'm not, I don't even want to call it a system. It's a structure, okay? Now, what you had was a, like seven, eight different agencies that had workforce development functions, responsibilities. At DPE, AIDT, ATN, ADCA, DIR, SBE, AEIOU, sometimes Y, and all of these agencies that never talk to each other. No common plan, no common vision, no combining resources to address priorities. It was just everyone on its own. And Neil was just absolutely amazing that we have development council, by the way. Now, the councils are made up of three different groups of people. Private sector employers, economic developers, and elected officials. You notice I didn't say college presidents. I didn't say college deans. I didn't say superintendents of education. And I didn't say people who are working in the public employment and training system, like in your one-stop career centers, for example. Now, those people are very important because they inform the process, okay? Now, they're ex officio members. Dr. Exley is an ex officio member of Region 2 Workforce Development Council. Now, what this council does, though, is through a strategic planning process, they identify regional priorities, okay? And then they work with the two year college to develop strategies to address those priorities. And then the council requests the funding, the other resources to implement programs, training activities to address those priorities. Now what this does, instead of the two-year college saying, Dear Chancellor Byrne, please give us some money to implement this, this welding training program, and you know, we know it's needed. And sometimes that you know, it's looked upon as being a little bit self-serving whenever a college, you know, asks you for that. Dr. Exley's position is now strengthened because who does he have asking on his behalf? He has economic developers, private sector employers, and elected officials saying, Dear Chancellor Byrne, this is a priority in our region. Please fund this project. Here are our performance measures and standards that we're going to use to ensure that we are a good steward of taxpayer money. Therefore, Dr. Exley's position is strengthened greatly, and, and your region is better served. Workforce development regions. Now let's look at Marshall County in particular. Um, we've talked about proximity to Huntsville, Chattanooga, that's certainly a, a, uh, an advantage for you. you also, we also need to look at other assets that you have, and one that we're going to talk about, John Marshall, we're going to talk about aviation in, in this area. In fact, I'm going to talk about two particular um, industries, aviation and, and automotive. Um, when you look at your employment demographics, we know about the layoffs from plant closings. Uh, your unemployment rate is, is 